Hello, Tanya. You are on mute. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I, perfect. I sound like the that Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> and, and I see we have Gary. Hi, Gary. Let's just hear in the chat, pop in the chat where base you're from. If you're, you know, Canada, US, or elsewhere, too, it would be really interesting to see if there's somebody outside of North America. That'd be interesting. East Tennessee, Canada, US, Georgia. All right. So, so far, nobody BC Canada. Eloise, hi, Eloise. I know you. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Calgary. Yes, I knew. Yes, Karen. Uh, yeah, Florida, India. Oh, well, that's hard. I'm like, oh, who's India? That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the good thing is, is, you know, again, for um, for those in the not in Canada, Canada has some really, really, really crazy rules. I often, now that I find out more about the U.S. compliance, I'm like, God, I wish that, like, I just want to give up working on Canadian clients and working on U.S. clients because it's just so much easier. We basically, up here in Canada, it almost feels like we're doing double the work for half the pay. Um, and it's just crazy. But this is why we love apps that can come in and help us with our complexity and make things easy. And then, you know, as that other app said to me, it really opens it up because if they got, if they know if they got Canada happy, like, you know, you guys in even the worst, strictest person in the States, you're going to be ecstatic because it's all in there. Um, so which is really, really good with some of this stuff. So now what I'd like to see is who's you who's used auto review. So maybe type in the chat if you're using it, if you've tried it, or if this is just the first time. So that way we can help navigate how we're gonna cover this. So Eloise is using it, Dolly's using it. Just signed up, Michael. You're gonna love it, Michael. Tried it. Oh, Vic. Hi, Vic. I know Vic. Gary's using it. Awesome. Just started. First time using it. Okay. So we've got some good stuff. Checking it out. Okay. So we'll, and currently implementing. So we'll cover as much as we can within this. Um, using it, give, giving a hard time to Hardik too. You know what? Again, Canada, hardik has got it. These guys are absolutely great. Um, and especially, like I say, they got Canada great. Right? Then they can go everywhere. They can be, we can hit all the countries with VAT and do all of that. And yeah, really, really bringing it. So I have a huge respect for anybody who sticks with us, um, the Canadians. <laughs> because like I say, it just makes everything so much easier with all of that because we have so many more, again, our compliance is so much more complex that, that just adds so many searches. And we actually even spoke this morning um, on one that he's looking into. I'm not gonna talk about it because we don't know if, I think it's, we think it's possible. Don't know what, don't know how, it's not on the roadmap. So I'm not gonna say that, but I'm just gonna say it's really exciting really really exciting um it um if and when it can be done so okay so who all has now tried the extension so those people that are using it or just starting let's see who's used the extension because that's like that's a game changer so cindy not yet oh lauren i take it you love it with all those exclamation marks so i'd love to hear from you then lauren what it is that you guys love it. Emily, amazing too. Yeah, Michael, Gary, not yet. Gary, you will be by the end of the call. I promise you that. <laughs> and I know, I'm sorry, Gary, I'm giving you more work, but it'll save you. It's great. Okay, so um, great. We've got lots of things. You mean the one that tells you the errors during the month? Um, yeah, essentially with that, it's an overlay on QBO and really, really easy to be able to go in and use it. Um, and uh, Stephanie, yep, it can be a game changer. It's not working 100%, but you're excited. Yeah. And and you will find, Yanni, that, you know, and anybody else that, you know, as you get working with it more and more and more, basically expand your thinking about those extra searches. And where we come up with it is what are things that can go wrong, especially in the case of, you know, your year-end review when you're passing it off to your clients or what IRS or CRA are looking for? 
in audits and reviews. Um, that stuff is, I mean, they've got some main stuff in there, but oh, you can add in all this extra stuff. We've got ones, you know, Canada, we need attachments for everything. We're accrual based and and with especially with GST, HST, we need those attachments for the input tax credits. Um, and so, you know, there's we you can add a search in. What doesn't have an attachment? What does? Again, you can get really, really funky and customized with all of it. So um let's I guess jump in. Hardik, before we jump in, was there anything you wanted to say or you just want me to just jump in? No, it's okay. You can jump in. I'll <laughs> jump in whenever there's a need. So perfect. Awesome. I just wanted to say hi. Thank you for joining all. Yes, thank you very much for joining, um, everybody. And like you said, I've got Sandra on from my team because she's probably going to be able to point out some things or be a little bit more excited on stuff that um I haven't because although I do use it, I only really work on two clients um regularly. Um and then I go in and try to work on all the other clients. Otherwise I spend a lot of my time working on the business, not in the business. And this is why I thought we put Sandra on the spot, have her in here because she works in the business in auto review like every almost every minute of every day she's in there. And so Sandra, first off, how has auto review changed your life? Because there's some people that are still just checking it out. So how has it changed what you do as our bookkeeping services manager? Um, so first off, I'd love to say that it is absolutely a game changer. It has made my life um, doing the bookkeeping a lot easier. It's shaved tons of time off going through the reviews. Um, I actually use it more on a weekly basis, but I also use it on a monthly basis when I'm doing our, our monthly um, checks for our clients as well. So, And we also use it annually when we do our annual reviews. And yes. when, I, when I try to go in and do the quarterly reviews to make sure she's catching everything, um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a part of our daily lives. So what, what has it changed? Does, how has it helped you? So, um, yeah, so that the extension, first off, I, I have to say, I love the new extension. Um, it's, it's a click of a button, right? So after I go through and I, and I process everything for that week and I, and I do everything, then I, I flip over and I click a button and I can go in and I can double check to make sure, you know, that my AP is up to date and the AR looks good, that I haven't missed anything. I can go through those checks on a weekly basis. So I'm just double checking everything. Has everything been cleaned out of the bank feeds and does everything look good? And, you know, has somebody missed something? So it's not even just for me and for our clients, but, you know, it's also, um, we also use it as part of like double checking um, what other staff has done in the books and worked on the books and if, if there needs to be some coach back we use it for that for that aspect as well right but um and and even just going in to do like your 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 questions and your ask client stuff i can see what questions have been answered and especially with the extension it makes it so much easier it's right there like you said it's an overlay and i can stay in quickbooks and not have any issues no nope. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, so I am signing in here on the other on on my screen and I'll be able to screen share so that you can see what it looks like with the extension and how you can actually go in and work at. I'm just turning off some of my other extensions um, in the meantime. But as Sandra said, it can be it can help to train your team. So if you go in and you set it up. Oh, hi, Gabriel. I see you, too. I see more faces of the people that I know. Um, Sorry, it's a squirrel moment with me. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it can help train your team. So if you go in and you're onboarding a client, <coughs> excuse me, um, and Jim, it is a new extension. Um, so if you go in, you onboard your client, you get everything set up, you can then turn around and give it, you know, basically back to your team and then have your team use it. And you've gone in and set up these searches of things that you want your team to review. And then it can double check and catch that stuff so it can help train them without you having to then review yourself and spend the time to coach back. Um, it's really, really good for that. So, um, so uh, if I may add, Tanya, please, really quick. Yeah. so the, the, the idea behind introducing this extension was that See, typical process is that you kind of, let's say, do your bookkeeping in QuickBooks. 
and then you go to Zenit, then you have to remember to add the client, then you have to like invite the staff user or whatever. And then like you kind of literally do a lot of back and forth. You have to make efforts to go into uh, Zenit and then go to clean up more or close more to start the review process. So it's like a I mean, as if accountants are like already using so many applications. So what we wanted to do is that we wanted to get the same experience. I mean, bring this experience inside the QuickBooks file, right? So yeah. accountants don't feel like they are using as such any other application. While they are working in QuickBooks, they can easily switch to Zenit and then they can easily switch to QuickBooks. So the whole navigation gets super, super simple, right? So we just rolled out our first phase. Uh, there will be a lot of other things that we will be improving it. So those of you who don't know, we actually just revamped the whole extension. So we used to have it before a year back, but then with our recent launch, uh, Zenit 2.0, we also revamped the whole thing also. So that's that's what that was the whole idea that it's like a one less app for accountants to use. So they feel like they are using the QuickBooks module itself. So absolutely, because how we used to do it is we used to go in, work in QBO, then we'd open to Zenit, and Sandra, please correct me if I'm wrong on any of these processes. Then we would go in and open Zenit. Then we would have to do a resync, essentially, because it, it just to make sure that it's synced to the information we just entered in QBO. Um, I think it used to sync, you know, every evening type of thing, but we want to make sure that it's updated for the information that we have. That could take about, you know, five minutes, depending, did we do a quick sync, a full sync? Um, and then we would get in and start working with it. Now we've got, let me just share my screen. Oops, that's not what I want. Oops, that's not what I want to share. Um, this is what I want to share. Here's what it looks like now. Can everybody see my screen? Uh, we can yes, see your screen now. Go. Okay, perfect. Yes. Yeah, you can see your yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so this is now what QuickBooks looks like. This is our sample file. So um, we're not giving out any information on here, um, which is great. And I'm already signed into Zenit. So when I opened up my QuickBooks, this came up automatically. This is the new Chrome extension. This popped up automatically. So I can go in, I can do, you know, my bank feeds, I can do all of this stuff, go and do what has to be done on here. And then I can click here to look at either their dashboard, which we've got. So, oh. I, uh, you're not logged in, probably. No, I'm not logged, logged in. in. Yeah, okay. I thought I was because it we had that there, but sorry guys, just a second. Then it. Okay. And, I'll, and then you can just refresh your yeah. browser once. Just refresh. Okay. I think there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's Perfect. Okay. Well, there we go. Okay. So I can go in, do my stuff that I want to do. Now, what I like to do personally is I like to duplicate the tab. We don't have to, as Hardik pointed out to me, you don't have to do that. Um, but, you know, this is kind of what I like to do so I can go back and forth. But you can do this. You can go and look here. You can look at cleanup mode, close mode, your questions that you have. Um, so this is the cleanup mode. So for people that are seeing this for the first time or just coming on, this is the automatic point or searches or reports that we have. They're automatically looking for anything that's uncategorized, for anything that's posted to a parent account. If you use classes, if you don't have classes, this can be turned off. Do you use locations? Entries without name, so this way we can keep everything. Customers are entries without a project or customer and possible duplicate entries. And the duplicate entries is huge when the bank feeds do what I like to call the stutter. You're not catching that stuff sometimes until you go and you reconcile and then you're having to go back and, you know, re you know, repeat things or maybe something went through and it's sitting there as a bill and as an it just got pushed through as an expense and then you got a bill afterwards, something like that. So it's going to catch all of those duplicate entries right there for you. And these are the automatic ones that are set up. Now, uncategorized, I can then still go in and configure these and I can add, so I can change the mapping. I can add anything to this that I want, which is really, really great because 
I like to have a lot more. And that said, I think they've gone and added everything in here that I normally would have done. So I don't think on this one I, we have to do any changes. So they really good job. What I love about them is Hardik and Nick um, founded Zenit because they're accountants who actually did bookkeeping as well. And this solved their own problem. And a lot of us deal with apps. It's like, oh, that really got somebody who is not just an did the bookkeeping understands that is really concerned about the quality and catches all this it really truly is solving a problem so i love it that they felt the pain and that they're solving the problem for that pain that we all feel which is great but then you can go in and you can add to things if you're you know overly picky or you know whatever or you can just undelete delete things if you want for that which is great you can save the configuration for that um, so you can do that with all of these. The close review points, now they go through and, you know, the payables review, receivables review. You're going in and you're taking a quick look at this. Um, you know, again, is there anything that is sitting here? Again, open balance, it's a negative. You know, you've got to add the to re review. You can put little notes in here. Um, tick, tick it off is reviewed. You can, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can do in here. You can also export to Excel. Now, what I love about using this, if I'm doing a file review on a, on a client, I add this on and I go in and I do a deep dive file review. If I'm prepared, when I'm preparing the file review to give back to the clients, I actually prefer to use the Zenit auto review report because these look different. They look different than the regular QuickBooks ones. And then now you don't necessarily have clients going, oh, I could pull that in QuickBooks or whatever. It's, you know, sometimes I, I report, replied this um, back. We did, uh, we had actually a hockey team, um, uh, a, a farm team to the NHL hockey team we had. And the CFO was an accountant. And I pulled that and I threw in some of the reports from Zenit. And because they look different, he caught it immediately. And he's like, oh, where did you get this from? This is a lot of detail. And that actually helped us to get their contract. Now, we since fired them because they just weren't working with our process. Um, which is fine, but that really helped to seal that deal as well and really impress them. So if you're dealing with somebody who is a traditional accountant, knows QBO um, or desktop or Sage, they're going to notice immediately these reports are different. So board of directors, the CFOs at our accounts, anything like that, just going to give you a quick edge on that. Um, you can, of course, because you export it into Excel, you can delete whatever you don't want them to see before you send it over. If you're like, no, we don't need that in there, you can manipulate whichever before you then put it in. Um, so we go through all of those, the cleanups to make sure everything is, is cleaned up. We'll get into some of the details of that a little bit later. Um, cleanup items, again, anything that needs cleanup. What I love about this, this one here helps us with our scope of work. So how many of you guys have clients that go rogue? Probably all of us. And that means when I say clients gone rogue, they're going in and all of a sudden you go in. We had a client who's not supposed to do any of their bookkeeping. They're supposed to be hands off. They pay us to do it all. All of a sudden we go in and they decided to go the profit first way of things and created like five new bank accounts. And it's like, whoa, where did this come from? We need to, you're not supposed to do this. Let's have a discussion. Let's figure this stuff out first off. Or they've just, you know, created a new credit card and given the credit card to, to the expense for, for, you know, their employees or gone in and created new, you know, new general ledger accounts and didn't know what they were doing um, or duplicate customer accounts, supplier accounts, anything new. So you can first off review here so you can see when it was the last entry was used you can see if there was something new that was added so this is really good if we want to go and do a cleanup at your end and maybe disable some of these accounts we could do it and i'm just gonna look here we're just gonna do a couple here and just go down i just grabbed a few and watch what happens make an active are we sure we want to make all of those 11 inactive? You'll notice, yes, I did notice there was a balance on one. If that happened in QuickBooks, what would happen? It all of a sudden would have let it go on through and it would create an, um, an, um, an open balance account, right? And we know that, an open balance equity account. Right here, 
It can't do it because there's a non-zero balance in sub account. This can't do it because it's used by an existing product or service. It can't do it because it's non-zero balance. So I love the fact that they've got that built in if we accidentally do that. Now, if I'm like, oh, you know what? I really should have paid more attention. We can go in and see the inactive and I can just click them and make them all active again. So that is a beautiful thing about this of keeping the chart of accounts really clean. Um, again, it's saying that can't do it because of the opening balance equity. Um, so that's fine. That's something I might have to do manually. So errors, if, if you try to do something and if QuickBooks is throwing any error, that's what we all display, right? So yeah, there is not a not an error uh, that Zenit throws. It's like whatever QuickBooks tells us, we display that message here. So exactly, and same thing with the close with close date. If you try to delete something in here um, or make an edit and it's, the books are closed, it's not going to let you do that either. So it has that that safe you know, that that safety built right in, which is great. But I love this for keeping things clean. Again, um, you know there's duplicate customers or again keeping your customer supplier list we used to have to do this manually every single year it was on there as a year-end item to keep things clean and i don't think out of the last 13 years that it's been on there for everything every client i can honestly say i think we've only until auto review i think we only did it twice because it's always like we don't have time we're going to skip it this year do it next year it's just a clean up thing and now we can do this and we can keep everything especially when we're looking at our lists those of us that are using qbo we know there's a maximum of accounts and our list of, of the gl accounts that we are allowed to have so this can now help keep that nice and clean so that you don't have to bump the client up to the next level or spend all of that time really digging in we can just take a look see here what hasn't been used and again the gls you know with some of them that haven't been used. Obviously, I'm you know not going to sit there and do like the depreciation or if it's a sub account of the original cost and the you know accumulated amortization. I'm obviously not going to do any you know bring any of them down. But it makes that job a lot quicker to keep those books nice and clean. So I really love this. And again, the scope of work. If we've got clients that are adding, um, here's the new entities review right here. If they've added something, this is where we see it. New customer. How many of us? have clients that are adding, you know, Business Depot or Staples, and then, you know, a receipt comes through, even if we're doing that through Dex, and it's like, it says, you know, Business Depot or Staples, you know, Toronto or New York or whatever, and so it goes ahead and adds another one. We can catch this here so that then we can go into QuickBooks and Dex, merge them, and be like, yep, never another duplicate again, so that, again, it keeps our list short or the GL list for the, the scope of work. So it's going to help you be able to price properly with the proper scope of work too, which is really great with that. Have I missed anything on that, Sandra Hardick, or anybody else who's using it? Have I missed anything so far that you guys want to give a shout out, out that you really love about it? Yeah, custom review points. Just got a question uh, from Kate. Kate, not not Kate, sorry. Uh, Pam. Pam so, you yeah, you can just, yeah. Yeah. So, plus add, plus add. Yeah, so I mean, here's, yeah. here's my general custom review points. And what I will do is if anybody wants to, um, or actually, you know what, I will just send out automatically. Um, I'll make sure Hardik has it to send out with the recording. A book that I pull together that is, it's it's over, it's probably almost two years old, but it's a little ebook on all these custom reviews um, that you can add in. So that way you don't have to worry about taking a screenshot or figuring this out. I'll make sure Hardik has that. Um, to send out with it. But how you do is you simply, um, well, it, it's you changed, can so on it's up add, top, right? It's up add, top. Add icon. Add item, right, add. it's up top, it's changed. And then so, review point. Review point. Um, and then we add our search criteria. So let's say yep. if you want to do a date, that's the default. If you want to do, so how we do this here is the attachment. If the attachment is no, and again, this is a Canadian thing, so sorry, Americans or anywhere else. Um, the attachment is no, and the tax code is not exempt or out of scope. 
I want to see this for our GST or HST ITCs. We can do that. Save this search to, oh, and actually I want to add because CRA does not care if it's under $100. So we can put the, the transaction amount or line amount, actually, let's do line amount, is more than $100. I want to call this attachments missing. Boom, done. It saved and it saves down at the very bottom. So there is none that meet that criteria. So you can get creative with that. Um, absolutely. So, and I would love if there's anything here that people want to see a custom review point, let's throw it out in here and I'm happy to show that. We uh, we did a webinar, um, a three-part three webinar series. And at one point, I think we had one of them is the, you know, stump the chump type thing. And it's like, okay, give us, a custom review point and Harder Can Altar and make it. And we, there was none that we actually weren't able to really come up with that came up. So here's a good one. Any unbilled charges? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, I haven't done one of those. Let's take a look. So add. So I don't think we have it right now, but I was about to mention it in my roadmap. So, okay. I mean, we are actually not, uh, uh, it's not possible through custom review points. But it's there is going to be okay. a specific uh, specific review point just to address you guys all the unbuilt charge. And then we will also give that ability where if you wanted to get rid of them, like if you wanted to like untick the billable options, you will be able to do that as well. So I was going to mention it into my roadmap item. So. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for that, uh, Kate. Um, and we love these, love the challenge because that's that's exactly it's we ask for them and then send hard to work to try and figure out if they can happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tanya, one of the thing I I mean I this is my personal favorite, so I wanted to bring it up. Is that do you mind if I share my screen real quick? No, uh, I just wanted to. Not. Okay, okay, just a second. I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Uh, all right, let me know when you can see it. Okay. Yep, we can see it. OK, so one of my personal favorite is this review expenses, right? And I'll tell you why, yep. because see, this is how I used to personally review. It's like when you look at the profit and loss, you don't really know where the problems are, right? Unless you go into every single account and then look at long list of transactions and then you go back, open another account. So that looks like pretty lengthy process. So what I used to do was that I used to export general ledger from QuickBooks and then we'll do some formatting, and then we'll do some pivot table, and then we'll create some summary table, right? So this is what exactly we try to do here, is that rather than like, uh, uh, I mean, doing all of those lengthy exercise, we created a review point called review expenses, where you can look at all of your expenses from macro level, right? Rather than going into every single transactions. So let me help you how, I mean, I personally use it. So like I'll, like just by scrolling it down, I can exactly see how all our, all my expenses are coded because it's summarized by vendor, it's summarized by accounts, and it I can also see the trend over a period of months, right? So just to give you a good example, like this is a vendor, let's say his Cox. As you can see, most time the transactions went to uh, this account called insurance. Okay, now in one of the month, someone made a mistake and put it to a wrong account, right? So now the system automatically identifies those issues and it flags it. Previously, when I was doing it manually, I mean, not only it was lengthy exercise, but it would still not tell me if there are any errors. That is what we wanted to do it automatically here. So. Then it understands your trend, and if something is off the trend, it's gonna flag it, right? So now I can easily pull up that hey, show me anything that is misclassified. I'm just gonna click on this filter. I can see all of them with this orange flag. So that orange flag indicates something is uh, not classified properly. Now it even highlights some of the issues where amount is inconsistent, right? So like. Let's say uh, the purple flag, which indicates amount inconsistency. So it's like, imagine every month you've been paying some insurance amount or rent or some sort of software subscription that you've been paying every month. 
And for whatever reason, if the amount is not consistent, it's also going to flag it, right? So I think I, to be honest, I was personally spending a lot of time doing this exercise and finding these errors. Uh, and that's why, because see, the best part about this is that just by scrolling it down like this, within a few minutes, I can have an overview of how all of my expenses are coded, right? And by the way, all of these amounts are clickable also. So like, if I wanted to find out that, hey, what's in this, right? Let's say this is pretty small. This is quite huge. I can pull it up and I can also look at all the transactions that are in there. And if I think that something is not right here, I can also make the changes. So the whole navigation uh, and changing transactions is quite smoother. So that's what I wanted to bring it up because I, I thought others might also love it. So no, absolutely. Take and it, it does over. And it pushes the changes directly back to QuickBooks. And while you're on this, the review yeah. expenses, um, this is actually what really sold me on it. When I went in and started playing, I do my own books. I am like, I'm very, very particular on things. Um, I My books are the only books that I allow certain things to auto-publish on. We do not let anything auto-publish on clients. Now, what happened was in my own books, I had something auto-publish. It made a mistake. My HubDoc bill auto-published through. I did not catch it in my review. And what happened was it was normally X number of dollars because the HST went into the the ITCs, which is, yes, sorry, Americans, Canadian talk here. But, and then what happened was the <laughs> amount was different because it didn't separate that tax out. And I'm like, holy crow, I missed that on my own books and this caught it. So that blew me away um, that that's absolutely great for that. Um, and it just, it was the OCR on, I can't remember if I was using Dexter HubDoc at that point, but one of them went through. And yeah, so that's, that is what really caught me on this. And this is, yeah, how you can do that. And again, you can change it, you can configure it. So if you're like, you know what, office expenses or these certain things I know are all over the place and you don't want to see them, you can just hit configure and not see them. Now, I don't, know if this is on my screen or your guys can can you guys see the color my screen. With me, it, it, i can't no 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 yeah i know it's your screen but i can't see the orange flags versus the purple flags uh, on this so i don't know again okay. is it just my screen that i can't see the color but they if you guys okay. can't see it it definitely they do come in different colors so that you can yeah. just hit there and zone in on that which oh you can see them okay it's just in my screen thing then perfect thank you yeah yeah um that's right but yeah so that's that's Super, super good um, with that as well to, again, help make sure so, that everything is done properly. Yes. So, Tanya, I think I'm, while, while I shared my screen, I kind of was also looking at some of the questions. So, okay. Dolly asked about the cleanup mode. So, I thought, uh, so just as you know, Dolly, I mean, cleanup mode is just one of the module. We do have a lot of different modules. And the way the whole Zenit is designed is that you don't have to use everything. So it's like, a, see, we also have a to-do module where you can manage the task, but we still have people using like the Lovasana or <gasps> let's say ClickUp or whatever. So yeah. the way whole Zenit is designed is that you can pick and choose what you would like to see, okay? Even in here with the extension, let's say you don't want to use, like you don't want to see all the modules, you can also turn it off, like click on extension setting and you could say that, hey, I don't want to-do module. You can turn it off and the to-do okay. module will then be hidden. So I, like the whole, like we have a lot of customers who use everything, but then we have some customers who want to stick to Asana, but then they still use Zenit when it comes to review, when it comes to the close process, right? So, so just as you know, the whole value proposition is that you can manage your routine task. You can manage your routine close, like your monthly close process here. Uh, which is like whatever your routine, like monthly task, like uh, let's say uh, reconcile bank accounts or review and clear transactions, review accounts payable and things like that, right? So all of your, all of that, you can do it. And we also have a client portal where like uncategorized transactions, let's say you wanted to submit to your client or let's say you wanted to get some receipt for some transactions. You don't need to send them any Excel spreadsheet or no more emails, no more Excel file exchanges. While you work here, you can ask those questions to client. 
your client has got separate interface and they can easily submit those questions. Uh, I mean, and the feedback using that portal also. So there's so many other things also that is available here. So sorry. So Tanya, you can take no. over if you like so. That's OK. So then, yeah, let's just keep going on with the questions. Um, the questions module okay. um, is just while you're here. So, yeah, the questions module, you do have to add it into the books. Um, it does have to go into an uncategorized and ask client, whichever. But you can put that in there and then type in your comments. Um, and Sandra uses back and forth with clients. They get the um, and you can have the comments automatically. You can set stuff so that you can automatically pull them down so that you're not typing more than once. Because if there's a question that you're typing more than once, throw it in there as a default question, um, which is great. So then you can do that. You can set it so that they get a reminder, you know, every week if they haven't answered it, they yep. sign into the portal. Um, and then they answer that right back in here and you can classify it correctly. Did I miss anything on that, Sandra? Really? That the no, that's... Put into the regular or Kardec? No, that's absolutely no, right, Tanya. So I'm not sure. Are you, sorry, Sandra. You I think Sandra. Sandra oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, because Sandra is the one that used this daily, like weekly with okay, clients. Because okay. we work on clients' books weekly. Yeah. So yeah, so that's exactly it. Um, yeah, you you would send out your questions, they get it, they can respond back right in in there. Um, like Hardik said, there is a little bit of a different interface that they see. They can't touch what we do, but they can answer back. They can also send me attachments if they need to. And then if you had a follow up question, you can also do a follow up question. So it's right there um, and, and everything is kind of back and forth. Once you've actually resolved that, then you can just hit resolve and it will go to the resolve tab for you. Um, so yeah. So that's, that way you can now go to a historical tracking and a historical audit log of that too. And, yeah. and uh, even transactional questions are not just limited to uncategorized. It could be anything like you can be anywhere. Like let's say I'm in here, yes. entries without name. And let's say for all these transactions, I wanted to ask my client, hey, what is this P name? I'm going to select them all, click on ask questions. These are template questions. I don't have to type in pay and simply ask, right? So that's how the questions get submitted. So one way to ask questions is on transactions. Like you can pick any transactions from anywhere and you submit the questions. Another thing is that let's say it's other than transaction, like you wanted to ask some general questions that, hey, please send me statement for Bank of America, two, three, four, five, something like this. You can even ask them. So you can ask questions on transactions and without transactions as well. And while we are here, I will I'll also kind of quickly share uh, the, the, what your client's going to see. So your client's going to see, hey, questions from accountant and like, like this is how your client will respond. What is this transactions for? Your client could say that, hey, this is travel here. And then they can also suggest you any of it. They can put the comments if they like. They can attach the document if they like. All of it, they can easily do it, okay? So then even they can do multi-select, like they can select multiple of M, multiple transactions. And they could say that, hey, all of these transactions should go to travel account and apply and resolve. So this is a real time responses that we get as opposed to sending them the Excel and then waiting for client to send that Excel back, right? So as your client resolve those questions, we get those responses also on real time basis. Yeah. Now, I also want to point out that as, as hard it just went through, the client's telling you to put them all to travel. The client didn't recode them in QuickBooks. So that still comes back to you to control where that gets coded to. That was just simply the response. So that's the questions part of it. Um, we don't use the to do because we use a separate to do part. Um, the close yep. part. Now, actually, before we do that, this is open in the extension. If you'll notice on the left side, there is still the QuickBooks menu. So if you're working in this and you want to go back to a report or back to a banking, just click there. Boom, you're back um, in the QuickBooks. Whatever, yeah. And then you yeah, click back up just... at the top and then you go back to Zenit, which is once you do that, it's now being refreshed and updated so that it's pulling everything you just did back and forth. So and before we had a tap for Zenit, a tap for QuickBooks, and sometimes it would sign me out of Zenit, or if I'm in Zenit too long, it signs me out of QuickBooks. None of that anymore. So I could work with multiple, like duplicate multiple tabs, because I usually do, I multitask very, very quickly, or you can work from one tab here. 
like this. So it works great. And this has all been in the extension. So this extension is very different than the old extension for, for, you know, Jim, I think it was, uh, you had that you had, the, I think it was you that said you still had the old extension, but yeah, works very, very different. It's not just an overlay of a flag in QuickBooks where it used to be. It's actually taking you right in there. <laughs> now, what I use the dash, um, the dash module for, that helps me with pricing. So I want to look in here again, scope of work. If I'm repricing or, you know, working with something, I can go in here and I can see, first off, the last reconciled entry. This is a QuickBooks API thing. I, it's I know that in anybody that's use, using any other type of software that tries to pull that out, it will not give us the last reconciled date. It will just give us the last reconciled entry. Sorry. Um, it'll give us a last reconciled entry on there. And that's a QuickBooks API thing. Um, so if you've got an account that's not hasn't been used in a few months, you may be reconciling that to zero with no transactions every month. It will show the last reconciled entry, which may be a few months old. But again, just know that's an API thing. That is not a Zenit thing. But I can look here and I can see, again, you can take a quick look at the PL snapshot right there. Or where I go to is I look at the transaction account. I can see what their transactions are, their average transactions, and what those transactions were over the last six months, the total. So this helps me price and look at this, the volume of work, which is really, really important for that and see how many accounts. And again, you can fit, configure this to add new accounts in here as well and to see the balance, which is really good. So those of you who aren't using the Dash, this is what the Dash can be used for. Is there anybody that is using the Dash or Hardik or Sandra? Anything else you could use the Dash module for? Yes, uh, I think you rightly said. You rightly said, uh, Tanya. A lot of our customers actually use this for the pricing purpose, especially this transactions count. And to add more with the transactions count, uh, if you go to the actual app, like when you are at the practice level, one of the things that could also help you is that. If you are at the top level and when you go to reports, you can actually see transactions count for all the clients on one single screen, right? So imagine yeah. like, I mean, a lot of our customers do this exercise on a monthly or, or quarterly basis. I mean, like they all they do, they come here, they export this because now they can see transactions count for all the clients on one single page. They simply do export Excel. And they quickly go through and see, hey, if something is really off, like if transactions like count have increased by 200 numbers or 300 numbers, they would then figure out if they want to reach out to client for price revision or not, right? So we also have uh, uh, this transactions count summary report available at the practice level where we display all the clients on one page. Yeah, because scope creep is a big thing. It's a real thing. We know it, especially through COVID when we're all busy. We've got our heads down just trying to push stuff through. Scope creep happened. I don't think there's anybody that scope creep did not happen for, but this is a really good way to keep an eye on it and catch as you go through. Um, so, and then close mode is now what you're looking at to be able to close, actually get the accounts closed. So cleanup is now, that's what Sandra looks at you know, basically on her weekly basis when she's done the clients now, she looks at that. We also look at that on a monthly basis. When we do the reviews, all of that, you saw Hardik, he was just able to change the dates. We just expand the dates. If we're doing a cleanup, again, we can expand the dates for the cleanup. Um, there was a question that I did see in here that is, you know, what comes out of the box or is there setup required? Currently, all of the custom ones do require some setup. Everything else that's in there, you can go in and configure, but that comes out of the box. Um, I do believe it is on the roadmap to have that you can set a template and then copy that. Is that not right, Hardik? That's that's absolutely right. And uh, yeah, uh, so this is something I was going to mention that also. So that is something uh, coming very soon where you could actually set up some templates at the top level, at your firm level. And you can then copy across all the clients, right? See, right now, as you can, as you know, that custom review points when you create them, it act, like you have to literally select the accounts or specific accounts, specific vendors. But 
each client would have got their own accounts, own vendors, own list, right? So that's why it's not possible right now, but we have figured out some ways where you could actually create a template and using that template, you will then be able to copy those custom review points across all the clients. So yeah, so that'll cut the setup down and then you'll just have to do maybe a quick reconfigure for that new client. If there's any anything that you want to reconfigure versus a full setup. Um, so Gary's yeah. loving the extension already. How do you add the extension? <laughs> um, yeah, it can because it's the extension is the app. Like it's great. It's the full app. Um, so Hardik's gone ahead and put that there. Just the, the Chrome extension. I will tell you, it works in incognito as well. Um, I know we run a lot of apps in incognito, and I just found this out. So when you go into your Chrome extension, I believe it's the exact same thing if you use Edge or Firefox, you go into manage the extensions, you pick the extension, and then there is a spot that says allow in incognito. So if yep. you use incognito, you do your QuickBooks. So I have my NordPass, um, which is our password manager, QBO and Zenit all allow in um, in incognito. So that way you don't have to worry about as, you know, oh, did you clear your cache if something's not working properly? You don't have any of that stuff in incognito, which is great. Um, so there is a way to do that, absolutely. Um, for sure. And then close mode, um, we're here in close mode. So close mode is where you add in your final review points. Here's the review points. Here's your monthly checkpoints that you wanna do when you close off your month. So you can yeah. have all of this so, added in here. Yeah. So Tanya, I mean, as you know, I mean, those of you who know Zenit from the days, like, like we just used to have one module. I mean, we used to call speed mode first, and then we renamed it to cleanup mode. So that was the only module that we were offering, and that was driving the entire process. But then we figured that the close process is not just limited to the review points, but then there are some more activities that we do as a part of the close process. So that's why we kind of revamped and introduced this new module, close mode, where you can systematically design your own close process. And this is fully customizable. So the way I close my books is that like I kind of literally start from my balance sheet. I, let's say let's take an example of cash and bank accounts. And then I have my task here that, hey, ensure no transactions in record discrepancy account, which means this will tell me that someone has not forcefully done the reconciliation, right? And with this, I have also linked my review points from cleanup mode. So I don't need to go anywhere to see if there are at all any transactions. I already see there's a zero count, which means it's telling me it's it's good to go. Similarly, I have a task that says review. I need to review and clear transactions. Now there are 77. I can click on it and it will immediately pull up, right? So as you can see, I have linked those clean, uh, review points from cleanup mode. So I don't need to jump between cleanup mode, close mode, QuickBooks. It just stays right there. Uh, also, to add further, I can also link the checklist. So this is the task which I need to do. But then to do the task, these are some of the checklists that I need to follow. So we, you can also attach those checklists here. And those of you who have like different people doing uh, like work, like preparing different people doing reviewer, you can also set it up at each task level, right? So typically what happens is that, let's say if I have a junior staff who would primarily do first review, and then if I have a team leader or manager who does the second review, you could also set it up that way and both of them can do the sign off also. So the whole purpose of introducing close mode is that like all of those activities which generally are disintegrated, like you have a task somewhere in your task system, you have then your checklist, somewhere you then often switch between accounting system to look at look at transactions. Also, while doing all of those activities, if at all you have a question for your team, you're probably using Teams, Slack, or those tools. Instead, you can also ask questions from here. Like, let's say I'm working on review on deposited funds and I got a question for my team. I can quickly click here. I can ask, assign it, and I can ask it, right? So the whole concept is that 
I mean, everyone will know what is going on on each task. Like, imagine if I come here, there's this dot indicates there's something in there. If I click here, I will exactly know what is going on with this particular task, right? Similarly, if there is some communication going on with the client on that particular task, I can click here and I can also see that, hey, this is the reason why the task is not completed. So I don't need to ask anyone that, hey, why this task is not completed? So we kind of trying to bring all of those different activities at one place so that it's easier to uh, do the close smoothly. No, absolutely. Yeah, so that's a whole, whole, whole concept behind introducing the close module as such. No, that's awesome. So yeah, Jim says he's in the process of moving from month and spreadsheet checklist to then a close mode. You know, absolutely, it makes sense. It's got it all in one, and as you said, hard it pulls from the cleanup and adds in here, and then you can add your your items on top of that. Um, I know um, Nicole asked, does the extension work with the QBO desktop app. It does not. And I just want to um, kind of acknowledge that that it's a Chrome extension and the QBO desktop app. I was real excited when they came out with it, but I'm like, I can't use it with this. So we're not using the desktop app except for our own um, thing because the desktop app is not running Chrome. So that's why it's same thing, you know, that it's just. Yeah. It's plain and simple, QBO or, you know, wanted to create it and it's not a Chrome. Um, that's, it's not a Chrome desktop app. So therefore, that's why the extension um, does not work in there. There's a lot of things that don't work in there. Um, so this is why we're choosing to use Incognito rather than the desktop app to be able to still get around that and be able to use all of this. Um, Just to address a question real quick from Heloi. So you can certainly... Um, what I call edit the custom review points. So when you, whenever you are on that, just simply click on edit view, change your parameters, and then just click on save, and you should be fine. Okay. Yep, absolutely. And that's the custom ones. Same thing. That's the way you edit the ones, the out of the box ones that they've got. Absolutely. Now, um, I've seen a note in here too with somebody that said the zero extension is different than the QBO extension. I don't have zero because we are QBO only firm. Yeah, if you could bring that up and and show the zero users in the room, be, because yeah, I mean, uh, it's just that, yeah, it's just that the placement is little different, but it exactly works the same way, right? So, uh, in case of zero, I uh, just so what is happening? One second, real quick. So as you can see, because in case of zero, there is no left panel as such. So you're gonna find this extension icon here, okay? So, and then once it loads, you, you're gonna find all the different modules and it will start loading it. Right now, it's probably syncing the data. Once it's syncing it, you, you're gonna see all the different modules and yeah, uh, you can just, it's the same concept, just like you'd be using QuickBooks. Yeah. Yeah. So was there any quest, any specific questions for the zero users before? Go back to QBO because I don't want you guys to feel that you're any less because you're not. It's just different. <laughs> <laughs> Got to acknowledge yeah. that. Just different because those are just tools. And this tool works with both of those tools. And then as Jim says, he's even using the closed procedures for the desktop, even though it doesn't do the magic cleanup items. Absolutely. You can use it for things like that. Same thing with the to-do. You can add to-dos in of folders just by sitting on the practice side of things. You can have that great big overview of things like that. So you can use this for all of your clients, even though all of your clients might not be in QBO or in zero. So that's perfect for that. So have there been any questions that we haven't answered or any curious things right so, now that you've got? I mean, and you can see, yeah. we've shown how easy you can go back and forth between the QuickBooks um, with the extension. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Pam had so, a zero question. Uh, I mean, I, I just uh, left a message to Teams. They're kind of going through all the chats meanwhile and just making sure the questions are answered. Meanwhile, uh, Tanya, as we are coming closer to the call, I thought we'll just spend a couple of minutes real quick just to talk about the roadmap. The roadmap. Right. Perfect. And and this is more like a this is more like not like a two years or one year kind of it. It's like pretty 
pretty immediate roadmap that I'm talking about quarter or so, right? So uh, uh, one of the things that we will be doing with the cleanup mode is that a lot of people have asked that if they can actually copy these templates like custom review points across all the clients, which I already spoke about, that's something we are planning it. So you could have a template at your practice level, just like your templates for everything else. You would have a template for custom review points that you will be able to copy to all the clients. That's one thing. Second thing we talked about billable thing, and this has been requested by some of you already where like you wanted to see unbelievable expenses or transactions, and then you also wanted to have a, a, an ability to remove the, the billable tick. So that's also going to be available. That's second thing. Third thing is that, especially, and this is something for uh, our Canadian friends, where the sales tax is it's like a, right now it's difficult to find out if something has been applied, a wrong tax, tax code or not, I mean, not like text code is not applied at all. So we're going to have be introducing a separate review point specifically talking about that. Hey, just like a imagine like this. I mean, you got some sort of discrepancy with the GL. It it flags it. Similarly, if you have some discrepancy with your sales tax code, uh, it will be uh, it will actually flag it also. Right. That's another thing. Uh, we already started working on it. Uh, that's that. Yeah, for and then obviously there are so many other features with the close, but one of the things that have been requested by some of you is the reports, right? So see, right now our reports are just limited to uh, profit and loss, balance it, and it's more like a use for internal purpose, right? But one of the things that we are actually uh, working on right now is introducing interactive report for clients, right? Right now, we don't like imagine you kind of let's say create a package out of it, fancy package, PDF copy, you send it to your client. Now, what happens if your client has a question, right? They either send you an email or send you a text or probably use portal to address those questions, right? So the whole trail or the whole question answer happens at different places. So now what we are thinking to do is that Obviously, there will be a way to print those reports into PDF, but then we also wanted to have a, a interactive report. So just like we see the financials on our end, similarly, your clients will also be looking at the financials on their portal, like profit and loss, balance it, aging, and all of it, where they can look at your review, com review notes, they can put their review notes, they can ask questions, so that way you don't literally do any back and forth outside this, right? So then then it means that like it will be easier for you guys to know that hey, this particular account has got question. In fact, your client will also know. So this is a more like a two-way interactive reports that we are right now working on it. So these are the immediate ones. I mean, we definitely have a pretty long wish list. I'm definitely not gonna cover it, but just as you guys know, we release features every two weeks, okay? And most of the features, in fact, more than 90% of our features come from based on our customer's request. So if at all you guys have anything uh, in your mind that you would like to see, just feel free to send it to us. We prioritize based on like uh, how many customers want this and we then actually work on it, right? So uh, let it come in if at all you guys have any wish list. So that's uh, from my end, Tanya. Okay, no, that's perfect. And I see that it looks like everything's now been um, answered or somebody is going to be reaching out directly. Um, with that, I know, Hardik, you're going to have the chat, so you're going to be able to go through and make sure um, nothing yep. will be missed in here. Um, and again, yep. you know, you guys will all have have my custom searches. Um, you're going to have Hardik said, yeah, he'll send if he's got any extra ones to add in, he'll have there. Um, they're really easy. And again, just think, what is something that you catch? And that's how we come up with all these custom searches. What is something that we've caught that we have to look manually for? Because we don't want to do things more than once. If we do things more than once, you know, it's it's kind of like the definition of insanity is the way we look at it. We do things more than once and, you know, we're, we're creating more work for ourselves. So why would we do that? So um, that's how we've 
come up with these and again challenged challenged uh you know Hardik and his team to be able to make lots of things happen and then the one I sent him again I'm not going to say what it is because we've got to make sure but it's something it's I think it's a game changer that'll really be able to help us um help us thing on, on things so um again just watch for that um for the updates so I Yep, solves a few problems, Karen. That's awesome. Um, Erica says, yeah, thanks. Looking for the custom review points cheat sheet. If there's any questions, reach out. Hardik and I both have the, and maybe we'll just even, I'll throw in there a, an extra sheet that has the three, um, the three part in-depth series. Some of that stuff has changed, but that's where the real, how we get into the custom review points were. I'll go in and try to find that. But again, I am here. Hardik is here. His team is here to be able to reach out to help you guys um, have success with this. Um, because it is, it is like I say, it's a game changer and it was the greatest thing when I saw it and we got working in it and we would not, we can't exist without it. Now that we've, we've existed with it, we cannot exist without it. So yeah. Okay. So I don't see yeah. any more questions. Was there anything on here of anybody that uses it that, you know, there's something that you want to jump out? We're a minute over. So um, if anybody needs to jump off, you know, thank you for your time. But was there anything like Sandra, you use it daily. Was there anything that we missed that you do in your daily um, or weekly workflow? I don't think so. I think you guys really covered it all. The one thing that I, I kind of do is on the dashboard when I'm uh, sending out my monthly reviews to some of our support clients, I do like to give them some encouragement. So if the profit has gone way up, I, I will kind of point that out to them. Or if something, you know, it gives me a chance if something's gone down to also say, hey, is there something that we can also be doing to help you to like kind of advertise our, our uh, um advisory service as well and stuff like that. So those are types of the things that I do also in the AR and the AP reports at year end. Um, I can also flip to see what was what was done as of year end and what was done as of today, because we all know sometimes things get paid um, after the fact and stuff like that. So um, I use those custom searches for that too in, in, in there. So, but that's, you guys did a great job and you guys covered it all. So it's a one-stop shop for sure. Awesome. Thanks. I just wanted to point out because Pam's asked about leaving transactions in the bank feed. So yes, the official way to do that, but there's the workaround because I'm the workaround queen. I got workarounds for everything. So yeah, you add it to an ask my accountant or uncategorize and then ask and then recategorize when you get the answer. Or if you remember, Hardik showed that you could ask a question that's not related to a transaction. You could just throw the question in there leave it in the bank feed if you want to throw it in as a non-transactional question get the answer and and do that so it can work either way whichever your workflow works um works yeah. best so and, and uh, just to add further uh, with the extension we will also put some sort of button there on the bank feed so if you don't want to go to ask questions separately it could actually copy the, the description from your uh, bank feed and it can actually ask you a question as well right awesome um and see the bank feed transactions in zenit that's actually not really necessary um and so no they wouldn't be in the dash count because the dash counts is what's in the books um but seeing the bank feed again this is an extension so you're using it within quickbooks so you can have one tab with your bank feed open one tab with that yeah. or go back and forth the way it is um because until it's in the books, it's really difficult for them to read it because it's not in the book. So that's that's a uh, yeah, that's a whole separate in fact, the, the QuickBooks QuickBooks API actually does not allow not us but anyone else to read the bank feed. But as you rightly said, Tanya, as you're working in QuickBooks and through the extension, it's like a I mean it's same thing, right? So uh, because Zenit is right there, so it's pretty easy. But with the extension, yeah. we will figure out see uh, figure out to see if we are able to get that information somehow. And that may change, um, especially up here in Canada. The API may change down the road because I don't know if you're aware of this, Hardik, yeah. but we are working on open source banking, and that is going to change things. And there's now QBO has direct agreements that they're starting to work with with the bank. So, yay! That means our bank feeds aren't going to break like this, and the two-factor authentication is not going to be a pain in the butt. So, um, fingers nice. crossed for when that comes out. I do know that QuickBooks is working on that. They announced that at the um, 
at the 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 Canadian QuickBooks Get Connected events that they had, um, and I'm actually helping them test that in the back end. So, um, yeah, we're going to make sure that works really well. But when that comes out, that may change. But it, the the banks have to open the API. It, it's all the agreements with QuickBooks and with it, it's just a lot more complex with that than than that. But yeah, you know, again, fingers crossed. There's changes coming that may very well change things here. So. Okay, so I think everything has been answered. Um, again, thank you very much. We've gone six minutes over, so thank you so much for your time. Again, please feel free to reach out. Um, again, the Zenit team is amazing. Hardik and his team are great. They love challenges. Sorry, Zenit team, but yeah, I'm going to tell them throw them at the challenges. Those reports that you want, challenge them to make to do it. And they they've Absolutely. not they've not let us down with anything unless it's an API thing. If it's not an API thing, they've come up with a yeah. with a solution. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Um, again, I will make sure, Hardik, I will send you over that very shortly by Slack, yeah. the the custom yeah. review points. And again, if anybody has questions, please feel free to reach out. Again, Hardik's team is amazing. Um, we're, you know, work around teams. So feel free if you want to reach out to, to me as well. Um, you know, absolutely do that. But it's, you know, this this as you've seen, yeah. the extension is a game changer because it can allow us to do everything quicker and better. So, yeah. Awesome. So All thank right. you very thank much, Thank you, Sanya. Thank you, Sandra. And thank you, everyone, for joining in. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye -bye. Have Take a great care. day, all. Take yeah. care. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.